All right, good morning, church. How are we doing today? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. We sure uh, got some people still filing in, but, you know, Scripture tells us that God's house is a house of prayer, right? And uh, today we've got a special opportunity. We've got a little bit of a different um, schedule. Um, we've got Chad here. He's with us. Chad is one of my friends. He is... Uh, probably my primary mentor in my ministry, and uh, I'm really excited to have him with us this morning. But he's going to lead us through a special service. We're going to spend time in prayer, in worship, and uh, read through God's Word today. But I'm going to just invite us. Let's stand, and then we'll pray, and then we'll begin to sing. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, and we thank you for this church, God. I thank you for the people who have chosen to set aside this time to be with you, with your children, God. I just ask, Lord, that as we as we enter this time, God, that we will be solely focused on you, God, that we will be not distracted by what's going on around us, Father, but that we will be focused on you in your true beauty of who you are, Father, and we will recognize, God, that you are in this place. God, where two or three are gathered, we know you are in the midst. So make sure, God, that you just help us to be aware of your presence moving in this place. God, be uh, receptive to what your spirit moves and says to our hearts, Lord. And God, we thank you again for who you are. We thank you for this opportunity. It's in your holy, precious name that we pray. Amen. Let's sing together. Well, good morning, church. Let's remain standing. We're here to come as the body of Christ together to focus on the one who saves us, encourages us, heals us, and provides for us. So let's worship together. sing these words out. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in our the King of glory, the King above all kings. Come on, sing it out. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You'd lay down your life. I sing for all that you've done for me. Has he done great things for you, church? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The king of glory, the king of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross, you'd lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me, sing worthy, and worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is 
is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Oh, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you'd lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. sing it out. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou That God is Son, not sparing, sent Him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, and how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Sing that chorus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Come on, sing it out. And how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, 
So, Father, we're just thankful this morning for how great you are in our lives. God, we're just thankful that we can come to this place as your children, and Lord, lift your praises. And God, I just pray that whatever might be on our hearts and minds today, God, I just pray that we would um, just hand it over to you, God, that it might be um, anxiousness, depression, whatever it might be that might be filling our minds, God, we surrender it to you. We just pray that our full focus would be on you today. And God, we're just praying that you would just uh, do great things today, God, like you always do. We're thankful for your faithfulness. And God, we just pray this in the wonderful, holy name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Well, this might be a little bit out of the norm for you because you're probably used to somebody standing up there, but that's okay. This will uh, just be my pulpit today as I lead you through this morning. Um, it's certainly an honor to be here uh, with Clayton. Um, when I went to Marion First Church of God in 2004 through 2011, I think uh, he was in elementary school or might have been in kindergarten or something. So I don't feel old at all, knowing standing here, sitting here today, uh, speaking in front of you. But um, it's been a joy just watching Clayton um, grow in his musical abilities and um, just in his spiritual walk as well. So. Um, you've got a great gym here at Charleston First Church of God, and uh, I certainly appreciate being with you today. So um, what we wanted to do today is just kind of walk us through just a time of worship and prayer together, and we're going to spend time in the Word as well. Um, but our weekend gatherings can become uh, very ritualistic. Um, you know, we come in together and we sing three songs and uh, we have a speaker that gets up and speaks, and then we do a closing song, and then we're figuring out where we want to go to lunch. So uh, that, be, that can become our norm. And uh, so today, we just want to um, just maybe remove all of our traditions, things that we're used to. Uh, traditions are good, um, but when we uh, put worship in a box, and then we just say, you know, Lord, come in and, and fill me up. We want to see what you want to, we want to see what you want to do today. You know, worship begins at our homes. It's a daily lifestyle. Um, it's just not a weekend event. The worship, when we come together, it's certainly something we do every day. Hopefully you do every day, uh, at the start of your day and at the end of your day, uh, that we worship God as an audience of one. He is, he is our Lord and Savior. And so anytime during this service this morning, I mean, the altars are open. Uh, if you want to pray, I'm sure there's people here that will pray with you. Um, over whatever you have on your heart today that you need to talk with the Lord about. Um, if you'd like to pray with, by yourself, please use the altar on my left over here. And then if you want somebody to pray with you, just use the one on my right. Um, then that way, um, if you'd like to pray in private, that's fine too. So, um, And we know that it's easy to become weighed down and burdened by things happening around us. You just, If you open your phone on a given morning and you see the headlines, and I'm guilty of this, open my phone and you see the headlines and you can just become uh, just anxious and thinking, God, you know, do you really, do you really care about us? You know, there's so many things going on in our world and, and I'm here to say that he does care for you. I mean, we can let the enemy convince us of a lot of things and we can, as a church, as Charleston First Church of God, I know right now you're in the midst of a transitional period. And I know that it can be easy to let the enemy whisper those words to us that your best days are behind us. But as the church of the living God, I can say here today that your best days are ahead of you. So just be, just know that, just believe that with confidence. And uh, the local church, I still believe, is the hope of the world, the local churches. So we can be encouraged by Jesus' word that says, and surely I am with you always to the very end end of the age, and he will never leave us or forsake us. So today, we're going to explore Isaiah chapter 43. I know when uh, Clayton had mentioned to me about leading this service, um, this is just a passage of scripture that has been really meaningful to me. I know with, um, we're still, you know, three years ago, the COVID pandemic, it seems like it was so close, but some days it seems like that was so long ago. But this was a passage that I would share a lot with our congregation, um, just to encourage um, that God is doing a new thing in us and in our church. Um, and so just to set this up, we see in Isaiah 43, uh, we see Israel's redemption from Egypt's bondage. Uh, 
but it's also followed by God's assurance that he's going to do something significant in the future. Um, this is, again, this is one chapter that has just been really meaningful to me. Um, so um, I would often share these passages just to give people hope. Um, and God makes it clear in this passage that the reason for the creation, salvation, and deliverance of Israel did not arise from something within the nation itself, but from God's own sovereign choice of Israel as people to worship him. And if there was one thing you could identify in this chapter, one theme that when I read it was just simply fear not. So I think that's something that if, if you would leave here today with one phrase as you leave this place, it would be fear not that the Lord has this, the Lord has this. Um, so if you have your Bibles today, I would encourage you to take those out. If you want to use your device too as well, um, just use the Bible app. But we're going to read a section of Isaiah chapter 43 together. We're going to read verses 1 through 25. So it's Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 25. So it says this, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I am redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no god was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives at all the Babylonians in the ships which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. The people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob. You have not wearied yourself for me, Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with grain offerings, not wearied you with demands for incense. You have not brought any fragrant calamus for me, or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, and wearied me with your offenses. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. So as we look at this passage, we go all, all the way back to verse 1. God declared, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. 
you are mine. And isn't it great to be reminded that God knows all about us and says, you are mine. If you think back to uh, your significant other or spouse that you're maybe sitting with today, um, you know, the delight you have in your heart when you say to someone else, they are mine, they're my, they're my wife, they're my spouse, I love them. And so hopefully you still have that same delight today that you had many years ago, maybe for those of you that have been married for a long time. And so this is a reminder to us that God cares that much about us. He's giddy over us today. He loves us. He loves and cares about us. And we see in verse 5, God said, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 25 through 27, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? I love that question. And even though we've heard that phrase so many times in the scripture, what do we tend to do? We tend to worry. We are going to worship um, at this time with the song, um, His Eyes on the Sparrow. And I love this song because it opens with the question, why should I feel discouraged? And that's a great question today. Um, I before this morning when I was looking over the scripture and, and studying a little bit, I spent some time looking back in my journal and just, there was a section where I just shared some gratitude about what the Lord has done in my life because it's very easy for us to get caught up in the things that are going wrong or the trials that we're dealing with or the struggles or the things before us, the hurdles that, um, that are before us. Maybe it's a health issue, maybe it's uh, whatever it might be, it would issue at your job. But I'm thankful that um, I can look back into that and know and be reminded um, and have a heart of gratitude um, because he is faithful. Um, there's this quote that I wanted to share real quickly before we sing this song. Um, I saw this this morning about gratitude, and it says this. Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. And how true is that? Um, that we can have the hope of the Lord that no matter what we have going on in our lives, we can let the joy, we can sing because we're happy. And we can be happy in the midst of struggles. So let's sing this day. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing. I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His 
these tender words I hear, and resting on his goodness, and I lose my doubt and fear, though by But one step I may see, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eyes on the sparrow. I know he watches me. Sing that chorus. And I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the space. I know he watches me whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sigh. When hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the spell. And I know he watches me, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, I sing because I I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. So God, we're just thankful for the care that you have for us. We're thankful that you watch over us. And God, we know that if you care about something as simple as a sparrow, God, we know that you care for us. And God, we know that you tell us the number of hairs on our head are numbered, Father, that you know so much about us. And God, we're thankful that we can cast our cares upon you. God, that whatever, Lord, you know that um, even though we may think we're going through something big, God, it's nothing for you. God, we know that you can take care of us. We know that you can intervene, and we just ask you to do that in our lives today. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We go back to Isaiah 43, verse 2. It says this, when you pass through the waters, notice he doesn't say if you pass through the waters. He says when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. There's so much hope in that verse. And there's a familiar story that many of you might have heard before, um, but I just love sharing this story because it gives more context behind the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Um, and if this is the first time you've heard it, um, you're going to be blessed because it's just a powerful story. 
Horatio Spafford is the author of this hymn that we have sang for many, many years. He was a successful lawyer and businessman in Chicago. He had a wife and five children, and their youngest son died with pneumonia in 1871. And that same year, Horatio lost most of his business due to the Great Chicago Fire. On November 21st, 1873, his wife Anna and her four daughters were crossing the Atlantic on a French Ocean liner. Horatio was initially planning on going with his family, but had to stay in Chicago to help with an unexpected business problem. He was planning to take another ship a few days later. About four days into the trip, the Spafford ship collided with another ship. As a result of the accident, 226 passengers perished, including the Spafford's four daughters. Anna was spared as she was spotted in the water and pulled to safety. Nine days after the accident, Anna wired Horatio with the message, saved alone. Horatio then booked the next available ship to be with his wife. And on this trip, he penned the words to it, it is well with my soul. And this song has been an encouragement to all of us throughout the years. And Horatio's deep faith in God helped him not only to process and walk through that deep hurt of losing his children, but also has provided encouragement for generations to come, even to us today. So when you pass through the dark waters of your life, did the people around you view you as someone like Horatio? Or is your first reaction is maybe to question and to get angry with God? Do you begin to question God's plan, even for your life? And you look at Horatio, if he would have reacted in a negative way to the, lose, to the news of losing his family, how would that have affected all of us today? You see, our reactions to life trials and tribulations is a reflection of Christ in our lives. And our reactions affect future generations. I know that I have family members that have positively changed my life because of their reaction to life's trials. People are always watching us, church, and we have the choice to react negatively or we can shine the light of Jesus to those around us in the midst of our trouble. So God can use our trials to draw us and others closer to him, and God will never fail you. His promises are true. And maybe you're here today in the midst of a battle, and the only solution is for God to intervene in your life. Maybe you've tried everything under your own strength, and you know you're just thinking, God, I just feel tired. I'm discouraged. God can give you the victory you need today. We must only believe that he still has the power to provide the victory. To receive a miracle, we need to change our assumptions. And sometimes we've already made up our mind about something. You know, when we're going through a difficult time, we've already made up in our mind, well, God can't do this for me. You know, I've seen him do this for other people, but he can't do this for me. We need to change our assumptions to he is able. God is able. So we're just going to sing a few more songs. Uh, we're going to sing Sea of Victory, and It Is Well With My Soul. And the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And that's, I love that scripture. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail, because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Let's sing together. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you,
There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. In every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. And I know how this story ends. For I know how this story ends. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Aren't you thankful for that today? You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it. like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul and it is well with my soul it is well My sin, oh, the joy of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. our voices on the chorus it is well sing it out with my soul it is
is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. One of my favorite verses in this chapter is verse 18. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And I truly believe that God wants to do something new in our lives today. However, we are the ones that are sometimes the roadblock to that. We are the ones holding back what God wants to do new to accomplish in us and through us. And we could be holding on to maybe some past victories, past failures, past broken relationships, whatever it might be that are consuming our time and energy. Remembering our past victories is not necessarily a bad thing. It's good to have that momentum to remember what God has done. Remember what God has done at Charleston First Church of God. It's great to remember those things. However, we don't want to dwell so much in the past to the extent that it holds back what God can do new in our lives. He is making a way for us. The set could be saying that we could also say that about our failures. You know, we let a failure that happened years ago keep us from thinking about the future and hold us back. So God wants to do something new, but it often requires the step of faith we need to do. And as this passage indicates, God wants us to forget the former things. If we're always wrapped up in our past, we fail to see the new things that God has for us. And oftentimes when things seem out of control, that's when God is fully in control. We also need to live a life of surrender. That's essential to our Christian walk. Surrendering to God requires faith and the acceptance that God knows the best for us, even though when it doesn't seem logical. I know in my own life, it's the times where it seems like this is crazy. This is, and, th- and that's when God is getting ready to move. That's when God is moving me to something bigger. And he can do that same thing for you. I love the quote from Olivia Sanaga. What we really need is only a heart of surrender and always trust what God has planned for our life. So we do our best. God shall take the rest. Some other great scriptures of faith, Hebrews eleven six, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. Jeremiah 29, 11, I love this verse. Most of us in this room know it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I remember a time in my own life when uh, God was calling me and my family into full-time ministry. My wife and I both worked at Caterpillar in Peoria area. And uh, God was calling us to take a step. I had served as a layperson in my home church um, on the weekends, led worship. And uh, I remember getting a call from uh, Mike Ebert down at Marion First Church of God. He was the pastor then. And he said, hey, do you want to come be our worship pastor? And I used the common, I'll pray about it. And then uh, hung up the phone. I think that's easy for us to sometimes just say, hey, we'll pray about it. And then that's a way to kind of delay maybe what God wants to do. Um, But I remember um, during that year, it was a year later when I called him back and the position was still open. And during that year, God just began to work on my heart and changed my changed my heart. I remember calling him thinking, man, it's this position is going to be filled. This is going to be a no brainer. And, you know, I can move on and with my life and get this out of my mind and. And he said it was still open. So my family and I made the trip down to Marion, Illinois, and met with the church. And after meeting with the people, there was no doubt that that's where God wanted us at the time. So, you know, we, we, in fact, on the drive home, my wife was crying. And I looked over at her and I said, why are you crying? And she's like, because I know this is what God wants us to do. Um, So... Fast forward, God just provided in a great way um, for us. There was not a time that we could say, you know, God didn't provide for us. He always provided and was faithful. 
So what is God calling you to do today? What is God calling you to do personally in your life? Maybe there's something that God has spoken to you about, but you just kind of just said, you know, Lord, I'll just keep praying about it. Maybe today is the time you need to put action in your steps and say, Lord, I'm going to do this. I don't know how it's all going to take place. I don't know all the details, but God knows all the details. What plan has he set before you? You know, yesterday uh, when I got into town, Clayton took me a tour of the town, eastern campus, and uh, the Lake Charleston, which is beautiful. And, uh, you know, as I was looking at this, just exploring your community, I just, there were a lot of what ifs that came into my mind for you, for Charleston First Church. What are some of the needs that you can identify right here in your community? That's really where it begins, is, is meeting the needs of a community. The local church is the hope of the world. And at my home church, First Church in St. Joe, we began an all-church initiative called Do Something. And it was simply contacting our community leaders and asking them, what are ways, what are some things you need done in your community? And one of the things was, we need our fire hydrants painted. It was simple as that. So we said, you know what? We're going to paint your fire hydrants. And Do Something has turned into an initiative where 100% of our church has participated. We went out in our community on a Sunday afternoon. We had a short service on Sunday morning, kind of like a pep rally. And just to rally the troops, just to say, you know, we're to spread the love of Jesus to our community. And we had 1,100 people in the city of St. Joe doing various tasks with bright yellow shirts that said do something on them. So it was a conversation starter. So somebody asked, you know, why are you doing this? Why are, why are you giving up your Sunday to do this, to invest in our community? And it was a practical way for us to share what God has done for us. So we wanted to bless the community. And... So I would just encourage you, what are, some of the, what are some of the needs just right across the street? Some of the houses that sit right in your neighborhood. What do they need? Maybe there's a single mom. Maybe there's some supplies she needs. Maybe, I don't know. But maybe just pray about that to see what God would have you to do in your community. And you will be blessed by that. And I, and I love John Maxwell's quote people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's really true. And a question maybe to even ask that if Charleston First Church of God would close tomorrow, would your community feel the effects of that? I believe there's a unique opportunity for you, church. What would it look like to connect with Eastern Illinois University about their needs for their students? Could you envision maybe a worship service or Bible study on campus that started, was sparked from Charleston First Church of God? This is that act of surrender. We need to surrender our personal wishes for God's bigger plan. Maybe there's something personal in your own life you need to surrender. He wants us to be simply obedient to his call today. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. Maybe you're here today and you've maybe never taken the step to follow Jesus. You know, you can quote the right scriptures, go through the right motions of being a good Christian, but maybe you've never fully accepted Jesus into your heart and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Or maybe you've, surre you've uh, accepted Jesus in the past, but just over the several last several years, that's just kind of fizzled away. Maybe some other things have taken place in your life as a priority. And today you just want to say, Lord, I want to place you first in my life. 
Galatians 5, 13 through 22 said, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Church, soon you're going to be calling an interim pastor to help with your transition. And I would encourage you to support them in any way you can. Yes, they will have new ideas. And it might be easy to say the phrase, you know, we've never done that before. Some of these ideas may take a greater step of faith. Some of these ideas might be the catalyst of what it takes to reach your family and friends. So church, I encourage you to embrace the ideas. God isn't finished writing your story. So as we close today, just with a few more songs, just want to ask you some questions. Does your life reflect, reflect Christ today? If someone asked your family members or co-workers that question, how would they answer it? Would they know that you're a Christ follower? This is a crucial time in the life of this congregation. And are you ready for the next steps that God has for you personally and as a congregation? Do you have joy in your salvation? Do you still feel that same joy that God provided you on your day of salvation? And as we look at the King James Version of this verse, I love this version of Psalm 51, 10 through 12. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uphold me with thy free spirit. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So again, these altars are open. And I'd like you to just go ahead and stand for these last few songs as we sing them together. And if God is calling you to pray, I just encourage you to come forward and pray. Let's sing together.
I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You were providing then, you are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were Savior then, you are a Savior now, you are the same God, you are the same God, oh God my God I need you, oh God my God I need you now, how I need you now, oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing On your faithfulness, oh God, my God, I need you, oh God, my God, I need you now, how I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Let's praise him this morning, church. 
shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face and oh, the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For in last days we will sing our praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. No So, Father, we're just praising you this morning for your sacrifice for us. And, Lord, we're thankful that you are alive today, that you live in our hearts. And, Father, we're just thankful today that, Lord, this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. And, Lord, we have faith and we trust you. God, that you're going to do something mighty through Charleston First Church of God. Lord, my, something mighty through this community. Lord, that we'll see people coming to you and lives change forever. God, we know that's going to happen. And God, we place our faith and trust in you. God, we surrender our plans for your plans. God, thank you. Thank you for your care for us. Thank you for your presence in this place. And we pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can be seated. We got to hear a lot of songs that we haven't heard maybe in a while, but man, like the message of hope and encouragement, like that rings in my heart. You know, in a time where it seems like things may be different for sure uncertain what's the next step what's going to happen like man if god cares about the sparrows like he's got a plan for our church he's got a plan for each individual here i think we can forget that at times but chad thank you for coming and sharing hope um man so i just uh i'm thankful for this church and i love this church and I'm excited to see how God is going to move, but I know it's not easy getting there from 
from one step to the next, but place your hope in him. He's got it figured out. Um, by way of announcement, I think this week we've only got the women's meeting on Tuesday, 5.30, here in the gathering place. And we've got uh, our Wednesday night Bible study um, as we've, man, oh my gosh, absolutely, Harry, say it again. It's a good one. Wade has been leading us through um, this discipleship. Um, starts with beholding, and man, like, I hope that our intent and our purpose as we come in here every week, every time we're in the doors, like, to behold Christ, to see him in his beauty and experience him. So it's not about us, but it's about him. Like, <laughs> this class, you need to be here. You're two weeks behind if you haven't been, but we can get you caught up because it's worth it. So very excited about that. Um, as far as that goes, I don't think we have any normal agenda announcements, but we do have some more information regarding tips and the next steps for this transition. So I'm going to invite Cody to come and share a little bit about that. Morning, everyone. Um, so Next Steps Church has got some igniting, exciting news for us. Um, they're going to send us a pastor for the next four weeks. Um, he's going to start on July 9th. And uh, his name is David Root, and his wife's name is uh, Jeannie. And they're out of Austin, Texas. And uh, he's been a pastor for about 32 years. Well, longer than that, about 45 years. He's been a an army chaplain for 32 years. He served as a senior pastor in California for some time. He's seen associate pastor in Alabama for some time. He serves on the uh, Texas uh, Board of Ministry. Um, so he's, he's got a very, very large resume. Um, he touts himself as the, the pastor of excitement and anticipation. Um, one of the exciting things about it when we spoke with him is, is he's very motivated. Um, not only does he want to give us four great services while he's here, but he also wants to give us four studies of the Bible while he's here. Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, he wants to do some Bible study with us. Um, and he kind of titled the Bible study, um, Appreciating the Church. Um, we look forward to that time with him. We also have further things that we need from you guys. One of those things is, because we're going to do 9 o'clock, Bible study now. We're asking for volunteers for anybody who'd like to do child care. If there's anybody that would like to do that, there's a sign up sheet in the back. Um, you can sign up for one weekend, you can sign up for all the weekends, whatever, whatever you feel you're led to do. Um, next along those lines is the church is undergoing an assessment by Next Step Church. One of those things is a written assessment. And back in front of the AV booth, you'll find about a 10 page written assessment. Um, this is a chance for you to really express to us your, your needs and your opinion on the direction that the church should go. Um, your, your opinions matter. Um, so if you would, please take the time to fill one of those out. We ask that you deposit it back in the offering towers by next weekend if you can. Um, lastly, for the visiting pastors, we would like to offer them our parsonage as a place to stay. Um, we need to furnish that parsonage. So we also have a sign-up sheet in the back asking for anybody to volunteer anything that's on that list, things in the way of silverware, plates, couches, washing machines, anything that you might have um, that you're willing to donate to help make that a comfortable place for them to stay. Um, at some point, we're going to have a pastor that's going to be with us from 9 to 12 months um, to help us work through what this church is going to be doing to serve God over the next year. Um, that's all I have for you guys on those announcements. Um, I just ask now that uh, everybody, please go in peace, be with God, hear what he has to say to you this week, and I look forward to seeing you Wednesday or Sunday again. Chad, thank you very much for this time of worship, sir. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. I would like to add, I forgot to mention, next week we'll be having Shelby Frederick. You may be familiar with her. She um, used to attend here. She is getting ready to start an internship in North Carolina through Chi Alpha Ministries. Um, and it's just a college ministry uh, running through the Assemblies of God. But uh, essentially she's going to be a missionary on the college campus in North Carolina State. Um, and so one of the things that she has to do, she has to raise support 
for that. She will be uh, coming in and preaching next Sunday, filling the pulpit for us. Uh, and then following our regular service, she will give a brief presentation about what she is doing, where she is going, and why she needs um, the financial support. So uh, really excited about that, but just something to be looking out for and preparing for. Uh, and I had one more thing that I was going to add, but I forgot what it was. Oh, I would also, yeah, council, can we meet really quickly following service? Uh, it won't take more than like two and a half minutes. So, Harry doesn't believe me. <laughs> hey, Harry, why don't you pray as we leave? Pr yeah, Harry, pray for us as we leave. <laughs>